All right, everyone, it's your man Brett from The Skateboarding Show here with another think piece. And I've been inspired by something uh, today that I've read um, that I kind of, I've, I've, I've actually made some notes for a change because uh, I want to make sure that I quote it properly. So I've been inspired by something which then brought up a reaction in me. Uh, and I want to talk about the thing that was said. I want to talk about the reaction that I had. And I want to talk about my uh, thoughts on it, because my reaction and my thoughts are two slightly different things. OK, so um, first of all, it was something that I think I read on uh, the No Comply Network about something that somebody else had said. Well, it was a quote that somebody else had said. And that other person, consulting my notes, uh, is Ted Barrow, from who, who would appear to do something called This Old Ledge on Thrasher. Right. And they were talking about skate park, skateboarding and street skating. Um, and uh, Ted Barrow said that he hadn't in all his time done uh, an article on a skate park. Uh, and the question was to do with um, is there is there a difference in the mentality between street skateboarding and skate park skating? And his quote was skating is more meaningful and authentic when it's done in public space or it is done in a space that was not designed for skateboarding and that we have found a way to make it a space for skateboarding. In those moments when skateboarding as an activity is being tested, you have to find a way and you have to find a way to fit it in within what everyone else is doing. That's when skateboarding reaches its radical form. That's where it's presented. And uh, it took me a little while because being a skateboarder, I read that's when it reaches its radical form, man. But it took me a little while to realise that perhaps he also means radical in like the political sense, in like the something completely new and different and so different and so changing that it's radical um, sense. In, in almost like the philosophical sense, if you will. So... Um, so first of all, before I talk about any reaction that I had to that, no, actually, no, let's let's talk about my reaction. My reaction was one of slight defensiveness because I like going and skate in skate parks. And when the words meaningful and authentic are used, skating is more meaningful and authentic when it's done in a public space. I just thought, oh, I feel really like... Like, oh, does that mean my skateboarding is not meaningful and authentic then? Because I'm doing it in a skate park. Um, and then I mulled it over for a little bit. And I realised also the sort of counterpoint to that, which is to the counterpoint to my reaction, which is that I'm supposed to be here. And I am. I'm a philosophical person. So I couldn't help but think about what he had said and then go... There are some really valid points there, actually, some really, really valid points. Whether I, you know, uh, I'm challenged by the words meaningful and authentic um, because I still think skateboarding done in a skate park is meaningful and authentic. But I totally uh, dig and sort of agree and can see the viewpoint of when it's done in a public space or a space that's not designed for skateboarding, uh, and and we find a way to make it work. We find a way to make it fit in. Um, that would make it really meaningful. It would make it meaningful and make it authentic. I mean, that skating is more meaningful is what he's saying, and, and that's fair enough. And I don't, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to argue the point. Far from it. I'm saying I really like what he said. It brought up a reaction in me. But I'm sort of I'm also trying to get over myself and get past that reaction and look at sort of, if you will, some sort of objective truths as well as subjective truths, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, do yeah, do I think it's more meaningful or authentic? Possibly not. But that doesn't invalidate what's being said. It's totally valid that it is very meaningful and authentic when we take our skateboarding and do it in a space that's not meant for skateboarding. And I can absolutely see the point uh, and don't disagree at all. It makes it incredibly authentic and incredibly meaningful. 
in those moments where skateboarding as an activity is being tested and you have to find a way to fit it in within what everyone else is doing, that's when skateboarding reaches its radical form. Love that. Because it's it becomes a, a radical action. It becomes a, an action of the radical by saying... No, no, this, this, this plaza was not designed for this. This planter that you've put in to put plants in was not designed for me to jump on and grind or slide, but I'm going to. And we're repurposing the space that you've got. You built all this to contain consumerism and capitalism uh, and uh, commerce. And we're saying, no. No, we're not gonna we're not gonna use it for that. We're gonna use it for something completely else. It's as a radical idea, as a, as an act of radicalism. There, as an act of radicalism, we are gonna do this in a completely different way than what you ever thought about it about, and what ninety nine point nine percent of the people walking through here would ever think about. Like I was saying the other day about like the critical eye that we have that can look at something and go, "You could sesh that." So I really like what's being said there, uh, and and I like, uh, um, yeah, and and I like the bit about it does make it meaningful and authentic when we take a space uh, that wasn't designed for skateboarding. It's, it's it's radical and it's meaning and authentic, and it reminded me though of a of a conversation that I've had with some vert skateboarders about where it reminded me of a concept which is kind of related to that, and maybe not, but maybe I'm going off topic a little bit, but. The difference between uh, street footage and vert footage is not the is not only the obvious thing that one's done on street and one's done on vert, but it's the in street footage you take into account all those other parameters. You take into account the run up, the the landing, the size of the gap, you know whether the skateboarder had to land on some sketchy little thin bit of concrete, or whether the skateboarder had a sketchy thin run up that they had to try and run along and then throw their board down and get the speed up. And even that alone was scary or gnarly enough as it is because there was a drop one side of it before they even kickflip or ollie or 180 or whatever it is they do off the end over the gap down into the landing. So there's a whole set of parameters, a whole set of um, circumstances that are taken into account when you observe uh, street media, whether it be a photograph or video footage or whatever it may be. Whereas in vert skateboarding, you kind of strip away that stuff and you're left with just the trick and the skateboarder because on the whole, I know vert ramps are different and the transitions are slightly different and the, the amount of vert on it is slightly different and the height is slightly different, but the basic fundamental principles of a vert ramp are the same. So, uh, and some people go and skate the same vert ramp regularly, so it becomes absolutely not about the train in any way or any other or any other circumstances or any other parameters it becomes purely about the skateboarder and the trick and their performance whereas in the street media it's their performance plus the other extenuating circumstances around that performance the environment the environment factor is kind of taken out in a way is neutralized in vert skateboarding because it's a vert it's done on a vert ramp um and yes some of them are slightly different to each other but the underlying principle is pretty much the same so one vert ramp to another um yeah you sort of strip out that and you're left with just the performance um so one could one could put forward the counterpoint that does that make it more authentic because actually you're not having to factor in a load of external circumstances and a load of external factors that are not actually skateboarding. Because, uh, and again, I'm not trying to argue the point made by Ted Barrow from the old, this old ledge. I'm not trying to argue it. I love that the, I've been presented with a philosophical viewpoint and it's made me start thinking. Because um, I don't think there's anything to agree or disagree with. That is this person's point of view. And I think they've got some valid points, but that's only my point of view. Um, but it, but is is something is is vert skateboarding super meaningful and authentic because 
you neutralize the idea of any extenuating circumstances and you strip it right down to just the skateboarder and just the trick because a vert ramp is a vert ramp is a vert ramp so uh so you're sort of you're you're, you're presenting footage on one particular terrain only and that's it so you strip it right but and so by doing that you you make the terrain null and void it's uh, that that's not that's not the thing anymore the thing is what did that person do on that vert ramp what did that what can that person do on some sort of transition with a vertical wall vertical section of it at the top i can see both points of view i can see both points of view that could that could easily argue that 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 you could easily argue both of them are more meaningful and authentic than the other one and which one's the winner or which one is more authentic is not really the point it's certainly not the point of what i'm doing the point of what i'm doing is just presenting both of those ideas and go have you ever thought about that i hadn't really thought uh, i had thought about the idea that we repurpose space when we go street skateboarding uh, because because despite what i just said about um despite what i said at the beginning about i skate skate park skate parks a lot i um well i'm, I'm in my mid 40s i skated through most of the 90s pure like pretty much just street we used to meet at a midi ramp in Cheltenham and then go skate street um with, with no pads no helmet nobody else around because because the sunday trading laws were different we were really repurposing the streets because uh and, and granted we don't have to although it also meant that we don't have to dodge pedestrians but then the trading laws changed on a sunday and the shops were open and all of a sudden there was people in our playground and it was really annoying but there you go um so i've done my share of of street skateboarding i've done my share of dirty dusty car parks school playgrounds uh promenades actual streets actual bombing down street uh bombing down roads leading into Cheltenham. there's a lovely one comes off the race course down into Cheltenham that you could bomb um both ways both into Cheltenham and into one of the villages out of Cheltenham. um so, so I've done my bit of, of street skating and I completely agree that, that you can repurpose the space quite easily. What somebody designs as a nice bench for people to sit on and has an image of people sat and drying their lunch. We're like, no, nah, that's, that's, that's no slide, rail slide, tail slide, that's ollie over, uh, that's hippie jump over. That's, that's, that's a whole thing to sesh. That's a whole thing to sesh. Um, that, that's not just something to sit on. That's something for us to play that's something for us to apply our skateboarding to. So, uh, so, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fixated. It, it brought up a reaction in me, and then it took a little while for me to go. Why is that bringing up? You know, well, you know, it took ten minutes or so for me to go. That's interesting. That's bringing up quite a reaction in me. It's bringing up quite a bit of defensiveness in me. Why am I being defensive about that? Because I like skating skate parks. So I, I didn't like hearing. Skating is more meaningful and authentic because I could see the argument that actually, if you go and skate something that's specifically designed for skateboarding, then you've got no excuses anymore. You've got nothing left anymore. You, there's, there's nothing in the pot anymore to, to bring up as an excuse. The concrete's perfect. The coping's set in there perfectly. You've got a run up. You're supposed to be there. So now what's your excuse for not pulling the trick? Well, nothing. So you're stripped of all those excuses. You're stripped of the idea of well, security guard came, or the run up's no good, or the roll the the roll away's no good. Like you're stripped of all that. So does that make it more meaningful and more authentic? Maybe, maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe winning, may, maybe coming out with the answer is not the answer. Maybe just observing both of them. Like I've said, this is the this is the real critical deal of what I'm trying to achieve with this, with with these pieces, is. We don't need to be radical. We don't. We don't. We don't need to have like such an extreme point of view, and that one's right and then one's wrong. Both of these points of view can exist. It can both be that that street skateboarding is meaningful and authentic, and skate park skateboarding is meaningful and authentic. Uh, and I have no doubt at all that this person is trying to be. Uh, I don't think they're trying to be sort of incendiary. I don't think they're trying to be provocative. They're just giving their opinion and I'm grateful that they did give their opinion 
because it gave me a lot to think about and it inspired a lot of thought in me. So thank you, Ted Barrow. Um, thank you, genuinely thank you. And thank you for highlighting that. And, and it's perfectly valid and I like what you said. I absolutely like what you said. Despite what reaction it may have brought up in me, the philosophical part of me was like, that is really, really, that is a really valid point. And I can really see where you're coming from and you're not incorrect about any of it. It's totally radical. It's a, it's a radicalistic idea to repurpose city space the, in both in both the 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 physicalness of repurposing it and the conceptual idea of going. You think this has been created to contain your capitalism and consumerism, uh, but we're saying no. It's a playground for us. It's somewhere for us to apply our art form. This is an art. This is an art that exists and then disappears. You can't consumerize this. You can't, you can't, you can't commodify this. You can't like, you can't sell this in a way, in your form of it that you've created. We can sell it. We can commodify it in a way. But, but even then, it's completely different from your consumerist idea of, of what a city is about to keep capitalism and consumerism in it. We're in here creating art, creating art that exists and then disappears in that moment. Because the moment we've landed that trick and rolled away, that trick doesn't exist anymore. Even if you capture it on video, the only thing that exists is a video of the trick. That's not the actual trick. All right? We're like, we're like pure Dardarists. This It's a moment. It's a happening. It happened and then it went and then it disappeared and it doesn't exist anymore. There might You might have captured a photograph of it or you might have captured a video of it, but that's not the actual trick. That's a capturing of that's a that's a representation of the trick. So, um, so that's completely that's a completely radical way to approach a space that is supposed to be for something else. Uh, love that, love that. Thank you, thank you, Ted Barrow. Thank you for giving me something to think about and to uh, enlighten me and to to make me observe things from a different point of view. Uh, and to expand my philosophical thinkings and viewpoint on skateboarding. This has been a long one, 17 minutes so far. But um, go and check out what Ted Barrow does and check out the, the No Comply Network. Uh, for they are the people that brought the inspiration for today's podcast. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining me. This is Friday uh, I hope you all go skateboarding this weekend or don't. It's entirely up to you. You have your own free will. You can think for yourself. That is the only invitation I make to you. Please think for yourself. Um, thank you. See you all later. Bye.